Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Welcome to today's cooking class. Give you some volume. <laughs> I'm Chef Asata, and thank you for joining me in the Captain Planet Cooking Zoom. We're going to give people a few minutes to join in and get their technology set up. Um, but if you could start off by preheating your oven to 425 degrees, we're going to need a nice hot oven today. You said how much? 425 degrees. Thank you. Is it supposed to be cooked? No, the cauliflower should be. You said the cauliflower? The rice. Oh, no, we're going to cook the rice. <laughs> but if you already have yours cooked, that's fine. Oh, okay, thanks. I was like, ooh, rice. I didn't cook it yet. <laughs> okay, we're going to cook it uh, before. We're going to start that before our cauliflower goes in the oven, and they both end up done about the same time. The rice out. Okay, once you have your oven on, let's make sure the chat box is open. So go to the bottom of your screen, click the little chat bubble. That way you can type in any questions you have over there because eventually I'm gonna put everybody on mute so we don't get that crazy Zoom feedback sound because that hurts everybody here. So I'm gonna type a message in the chat box. And when you see that message, give me a thumbs up. That lets me know you can communicate. See the chat? Excellent. Um, the other thing you may want to do if you're using your parents' Zoom is have them change the name to your name, because otherwise I'll be calling you by your parents' name. And the last thing you might want to do that's technology related is direct your device towards your work area so I can kind of see what you're doing. And that lets me know when we're all on the same page. Change your name. If possible, it may not be possible to get your device aimed at your workspace, but if you can, let's do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then before we get started, the last thing we really want to be uh, cognizant of is our clean hands. Let's get a 20-minute scrub if you haven't already. Get those hands clean, scrub in between the fingers. Let's get around the thumbs, tops of your fingertips, your knuckles. So you get all that scrubbed up really good, the backs of your hands, all the way up to your wrists. You want clean hands, 20 seconds of warm, soapy water. And once your hands are clean, you can come right back here. Do you want to be able to see the stove or the work? Like um, just sort of a high view of the general work area. That way I can see like where people are if I need to hold off or if I need to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> so first. We'll see. We can adjust it if it needs to. This works. Yeah, when we'll talk, you know, he can always give me a thumbs up if he's ready to move forward or not. Okay. I'll try to keep the group together. 
All right, everybody. Welcome again to the Captain Planet Cooking Zoom Room. I'm Chef Akita, and we're about to get started. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. So make sure the chat box is open so that if you have any questions, you will just type your questions in over there in the chat box. So my first message is up. I'm going to put up my second message, which is... Preheat your oven to 425 degrees. We're gonna go into a hot, hot oven today because we're going to be making a roasted curry cauliflower dish. And roasting happens at high heat temperatures. And what happens with vegetables when you roast them, a lot of the water comes out, it evaporates, and it concentrates the flavor of the vegetables so that not only do they taste good, but they have a great crunch. So this is a dry curry that we're gonna make to go with some rice. A lot of times when we've had curry in the past, it's had coconut milk, it's been a more wet curry, but this is gonna be a nice, crunchy, dry curry. Okay, so if your oven is at 425 degrees and your hands are clean, give me a thumbs up. Let me see a thumbs up. All right, cool. Matthew, you ready? All right, we're going to go over our mise en place. And mise en place means everything in its place. And when we do this, we make sure we have all of our ingredients and our equipment before we get started, because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a recipe and realizing you don't have everything. Okay, so obviously we're going to need some cauliflower today. And how much cauliflower you need depends on how many people you're going to feed, because I have a big head of cauliflower here. And I'm certainly not going to use it all. I'm going to use about half of it today because that was a really big cauliflower. Okay, a can of chickpeas, which you have rinsed and drained. If your chickpeas are still in the can, go ahead and open up that can. Let's get those peas rinsed off and drained. We're also going to need about half an onion. Okay, a whole onion would be too much unless it's a small onion. I've got a kind of a regular size onion here. I'm only gonna use half of it. So we'll save the half, the other half for something else. Also bell pepper. Again, this is a gigantic bell pepper, so I'm not gonna use it all. If you have a regular size bell pepper, you'll use about half of it today. Our spices today are gonna to be some curry powder, yellow curry powder, and some cumin. And there's another spice that I'm gonna add that I really like, and if you go to the grocery store and you can find it, it's berry berry. Berry berry is a nice warm spice blend that's used in a lot of Ethiopian cooking, but it pairs really well with curry. It's almost a curry of its own, but it has different flavor combinations and together they're really magical. That wasn't on the ingredient list, so you probably don't have it today. Not a deal breaker. This is gonna be delicious anyway. We're gonna need some olive oil, salt, pepper, a little bit of cooking spray for our pan because we don't want our food to stick. Gonna need some measuring cups, measuring spoons, and our rice, which is not cooked yet. We're gonna cook it. Oh, and some garlic cloves, because I put garlic on everything. If you don't have fresh garlic cloves, you can use minced garlic or garlic powder. All right, um, the other thing we're gonna need is a knife, a cutting board, a mixing bowl, and a spoon for stirring. And all of our ingredients are gonna to come together in that mixing bowl. Then we're gonna put them on a sheet pan and pop them in that oven that we are preheating at 425 degrees. So, oh, and also a pot with a lid to cook our rice. That's a lot of stuff. You got all that? You got everything ready, give me a thumbs up. Cool, we are ready to get started. So the first thing we need to do is make well, let's do this. The first thing we'll do is prepare our pan and get it out of the way. So if you've got some cooking spray or some vegetable oil, coat your pan so you can set it aside. The next thing we wanna do is get our rice cooking. So my question is, who's cooking brown rice? Give me a thumbs up if you're cooking brown rice today. Okay, 
Your brown rice is going to take about 40 minutes. Who's cooking white rice today? Okay, your rice is going to take about 20 minutes. So I'm going to put that in the chat box so you can refer back to it. Brown rice, because it is a whole grain, takes about 40 minutes to cook. White rice takes about 20 minutes to cook, but they both start the same way. For every one cup of rice, you're gonna add two cups of water. So I'm gonna cook one cup of rice, which means I need two cups of water in my pot. So let's start with adding two cups of water to your pot. If you're cooking brown rice, add a couple more tablespoons, like another quarter cup of water. Brown rice needs a little bit more water, just a touch. Once your water goes in your pot, you're gonna to wanna to hit that with a pinch of salt. And we're gonna bring that to a boil. So turn it on over medium high heat. And I'm gonna type that in the chat box so we can all stay together. So measure two cups of water into the pot with a generous pinch of salt and cover and bring to boil. Okay. Once your rice, I mean not your rice, once your salt is in the pot, you can go ahead and measure out one cup of rice and set it aside. So that when the water boils, it's ready to go. You're just gonna stir it in the water. Okay, you got your one cup of rice measured. Just set it aside and wait for that water to boil. In the meantime, we will get our sauce for our cauliflower started. So once you have your rice measured out, grab your measuring bowl, I mean mixing bowl. Give me a thumbs up if you are ready and have your mixing bowl. Cool. So we're gonna measure, you're gonna need your measuring cups and measuring spoons, one quarter cup of olive oil. And of course, I'll type this in as we go. And we're gonna keep an eye on this water while we're making our sauce, okay? Because we're gonna have to cook the rice while we're making the cauliflower at the same time. But I'm gonna measure in one quarter cup of olive oil right into the mixing bowl. Next, I'm gonna get my teaspoon and measure one and a half teaspoons of curry powder. So that's my yellow curry powder. I get my, ooh, I can't see, one and a half teaspoon of curry powder. There's one and there's roughly a half. It doesn't have to be exact. In fact, if you like curry, add more. Add two teaspoons. To that, we're gonna add a half teaspoon of cumin. And because I have it, and if you can find it at the store next time, add one teaspoon of the berry berry. So a little bit of cumin. Half teaspoon of cumin. Anybody's water boiling yet? Yes. Okay, if your water is boiling, once you get this, these spices measured in, take a break and stir in 
You're right. That one cup of dried rice that we measured out. Carefully lift the lid off your pot so that the steam goes away from you. Yes. And then stir in your dry rice. Put the lid back on and turn the heat down to low. Okay? Okay. So we'll go over it. We'll finish the rest of the, er, the spices here. We're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, or if you're using a pepper grinder, just a few turns. A few turns of the pepper mill. Salt and pepper. Okay, stir that. Stir that. Okay, so I'm going to review for the rice. Once the water boils, stir in the rice. Cover with oh, a lid. Oh, it's bubbling. And reduce the heat to low. That's all we're going to do for our rice. It's going to take care of itself. It's bubbling. Yes, it is. Let me eat. Let me eat. So, does everyone have their spices mixed into their mixing bowl now? Give me a thumbs up if all your spices are combined in the mixing bowl. All right, we got a couple people still working, so we'll hold off for just a second before we get to the next part. Once you have your spices mixed up, go ahead and set that bowl aside for a second. Thank you, Jim. Uh, salt, that was a half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Is it time for the beans? Not yet. Oh. Or the peppers? No, I should So we've got a half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper. Stir that all together. And then set it aside for a few minutes because we're gonna work on our vegetables next. <gasps> vegetables. Yes. So you're gonna need your cutting board or your knife. Okay, so everyone's rice should be working by now. And we should be getting the last of our ingredients into the mixing bowl. So I'm gonna type what is our next steps are gonna be. We're gonna slice our onion and pepper into half inch wide strips. Okay. So the reason we're gonna do this into half inch wide strips is if these vegetables were cut really thin and they go into this hot oven, they kind of just cook away into nothing. But I want the onions and the peppers to still have some crunch and some flavor when this dish comes out of the oven 15 to 20 minutes later, okay? Probably on the 15 minute side because we still want all the vegetables crunchy. The goal of this dish is to have great texture. So we don't want mush. All right, once your spices are in the bowl, set them aside and let's get ready to cut up your vegetables. If you have half an onion, you're gonna to need to take this skin off. 
And the easiest way to do that is to use your knife, and you can look up here at the cooking, whoops, at the cooking cam. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you look up here at the cooking cam, you'll see that the root end here and the sprout end here are kind of parallel to my body. So the onion's running this way. I'm gonna slice off that sprouting end with my knife and then peel this skin off. I'm not gonna cut off the root in yet, because when you do that, it releases a lot of sulfur gas and it makes your eyes water a lot faster than if you leave it intact. So see, it kind of looks like a reverse flower right now, because I peeled this skin back. That also helps me hold on to the onion. So now all I'm gonna do is make my knife about a half inch back from the edge and slice down. I'm keeping my fingers in this claw shape so they're all my fingers and thumbs are out of the way. Sydney says you don't see it. Uh, do you see this camera right here where I'm waving my hand? Yes. Okay, that's it. That's where we're working. So I peeled the skin back off my onion because I only trimmed this one side. Make my fingers into this claw and then slice down one time. About a half inch. Then I move back and do it again. And again. So that I'm just getting half inch slices and when this with this peel still all on the onion I can hold on to it all the way to the end once you have your onion sliced up break up those pieces and put it in your mixing bowl there you go break up those onion pieces and add them to your sauce which is your curry sauce in the mixing bowl. If you're using minced garlic in the jar, you're gonna want about a teaspoon of minced jar, of minced garlic. So then we're gonna slice our onion. We're gonna add our garlic. If you're using fresh garlic like I am, you're going to want two or three cloves of fresh garlic. My cloves actually are so tiny here that all I'm going to do is barely chop them up so that they're still garlic chunks. But if you have larger cloves of garlic, you might want to slice them. So I've got like five or six tiny little cloves of garlic, but I'm going to go ahead and use those. So I like to use everything. And don't spend too much time chopping the garlic because it, it can be very rough cut. This is a rustic dish. Nothing needs to be very fine or small. Everything can be kind of big and chunky. So we need to do the same thing with our pepper. And the easiest way to do this is if you hold your pepper up like this, see how the stem is up? You'll notice that a pepper has sides. It'll have four or three sides. My pepper today has four sides. One, two, three, four. And since we don't need a whole lot of pepper, I'm just gonna slice one of these slides off because I have a huge pepper. This slide, side will come off real easy. So holding my pepper up and down and keeping my fingers back, I still have my claw working. I'm just gonna slice down and take off one whole panel, one side off of that pepper and save the rest for something else. Then we're going to do the same thing with this piece of pepper that we did with the onion. We're going to cut it into half inch strips. So I've got a little membrane in here inside the pepper. I'm just going to pull this out with my fingers. If there are any seeds, I'll just scoop those out with my fingers too. And then I find it easier to cut peppers when the inside is facing up. This side is slippery, this outside, so it's harder to cut. So I turn it over like this, make my claw, and slice this pepper into half inch strips. Just like that. And those are kind of long, so I might cut them in half. And then they go right in the bowl with the onions and the garlic. There we go. So in your bowl right now, you should have peppers, onion, and garlic with your curry sauce.
is a half onion. Half onion and a half bell pepper. And about a teaspoon of garlic into the curry sauce. If you're using minced garlic, go with about a teaspoon of minced garlic. So once you cut your bell pepper in half, just scoop out the seeds and save that other uh, part of your bell pepper for later for a different recipe. Pull those membranes out, yep, and then slice that pepper into strips that are about a half inch wide, about the same size that you cut your onion. So, so far, onions and peppers are about the same size, and that means they'll cook evenly. I see lots of slicing and dicing. You guys are, guys are doing a good job. And remember, when you're slicing your pepper, it's a little easier to cut it, cut side up, because the exterior, the outside of that pepper is, is a lot more slippery. So let's cut this pepper into nice big chunks or thick slices, and then add it to our curry sauce. With the onions and the garlic. Good job. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is add the chickpeas. Earlier, we, if they were canned, we opened them up, rinsed them off, and drained them. They're going to go into this bowl, too. Stir it up. And once your chickpeas go in, the last step is to cut the cauliflower into florets and put them in there. Now, the trick here is do not cut the cauliflower too small because it'll just fall apart. I'll show you how I do it. Um, I work from the bottom of the cauliflower. A lot of people just want to take this big old cauliflower and just cut it right in half. So if you look up here on the cooking cam, I'll try to demonstrate how I get into a cauliflower. I like to use a knife that's a little bit smaller because what I'm gonna do is cut this whole leaf ball out. Cauliflowers grow like this. And this stem has big, huge leaves that grow up to cover and protect the cauliflower until it's ready to harvest. So those big leaves have been cut away, and this is the leaf and stem ball. It goes right into the cauliflower, right here. So I'm gonna cut this whole part out by cutting my knife in an angle to make a square so I can just pull it right out. So I'll show you how I do that. It's kind of like how we envision the um, pepper having four sides. I'm going to envision this root having, or stalk having four sides. So this would be one side here, and I'm gonna cut in an angle going into the center. This would be the second side. This would be the third. So I'm basically making a square, and this would be the fourth side. Now, if I have cut in an angle like this, holding my knife, this comes right out. And I can just peel these leaf stems out and have nothing but cauliflower left. That's the most um, efficient way I have found that doesn't use a lot of waste. It doesn't have a lot of crumbled cauliflower. And you don't lose the stem, which is completely edible. 
So now that I've got that leaf part out, you see it's like a little bowl in here. I just kind of carved that out. Now I can break it off and cut it in half and just pull it apart. And I don't have all those cauliflower crumbs falling all over my cutting board. Again, I'm not wasting any of the cauliflower. And now that it's open, I can just cut it into florets. A floret like this is a little big, so I'm gonna cut this one into smaller pieces. If you're feeding a lot of people, you'll probably use the whole cauliflower, like four to six people. If you're feeding two people, you'll probably use half of a head of cauliflower. Again, that depends on the size of your cauliflower. Some are small, some are gigantic. So you kind of have to estimate how much you think your family's going to eat. And that's a little hard to do in a recipe. But the more you cook, the better you get at making those kinds of estimates. Now, if you are cooking white rice, your rice is probably almost done. If you are cooking brown rice, you may have another 15 minutes on it. So that's just a heads up to be mindful and check your rice. Once your cauliflower is cut up, it goes right into the bowl with the rest of the vegetables and we are almost done. A little more cauliflower. And again, don't cut those florets too small or they'll just start to crumble up on you. And you have a bunch of tiny little pieces instead of florets. Okay, once your cauliflower's in, give it a nice stir. Let's try to get this curry sauce into every nook and cranny of our cauliflower. We want this cauliflower coated with seasonings and spices because that is flavor. Keep stirring by scraping the bottom of the bowl and folding over the ingredients. Use a nice controlled method so you don't have food falling all out of the bowl. <laughs> and just keep stirring until your cauliflower is well coated and you can see the spices on your cauliflower. Just keep stirring in a slow controlled method, making sure you get all the yummy curry sauce off the bottom of the bowl. Okay. And I think you can see there, I have a pretty even distribution of spices all over the cauliflower. And now, once all of your vegetables are coated with your curry sauce, you're ready to go in the oven. So you're gonna spread the vegetables onto your prepared sheet pan. Now remember, we sprayed the sheet pan or covered it with foil or covered it with parchment. Prepare the pan some kind of way because you don't wanna put your veg directly on a dry pan or it could stick. So this is where you get your sheet pan. And spread those veggies out into one even layer like that. I like to get my cauliflower kind of spread out because it's heavy and it'll fall in and then my beans will be hanging back. So I just sprinkle them over the rest. Give it a good scrape and there you go. Vegetables nice and evenly distributed and spread out so that they'll cook evenly in that hot, hot oven. All right, 
I'm going to hold here until everyone gets their vegetables on the sheet pan because I want us to all go in the oven at the same time. Um, if you're cooking white rice, it's probably done. You might want to check it, go take it off the heat. Let it sit for about five minutes before we stir it, fluff it up. Brown rice, you probably got another 10 minutes. All right, I see vegetables going on sheet pans. Just spread those veggies out. And again, this is a dry roasted curry. Oh, that last word was a typo. It should say sheet pan. <laughs> Excuse my typos. Kind of typing with one hand here. Okay, right onto the sheet pan and then spread them out. Let's get ready to go into this hot, hot oven. So we're going in 425 degrees for 15 minutes. Once it's in the oven, do not open the oven door. We want to keep all the heat in the oven. So we want to get this pan in the oven in a quick motion so we don't let all the heat out. If you're ready to go in the oven, give me a thumbs up. Let's see where we are. One, two, three. All right, this is the moment of truth. We're going into our nice hot oven. Set the timer for 15 minutes. And then come back here because Matthew, Matthew, are you there? Matthew, I have a question for you. Yes. Once our food goes in the oven, because you've been in one of my classes before, what time is it? Um. It's cleanup time. <laughs> so once your food goes in the oven, it's cleanup time. Cleanup time. It's cleanup time. Once your food goes in the oven, it's cleanup time. Especially that bowl with the curry sauce. If we don't rinse that out right now, it could stain if you have a plastic bowl. So we're gonna take five of these 15 minutes to make sure our rice is okay and to clean up. Alan, your mom is doing too much work. <laughs> I know mom, it's automatic, I know. But it is clean up time. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where all of our dirty dishes head on over to the sink. We put the tops back on our herbs and spices, make sure they're closed up nice and tight. Same thing with that olive oil and put everything away. If you have onion and bell pepper left, let's wrap it up or get it in a container so that you can keep it in the refrigerator and it'll stay safe. And let's continue to clean up for the next five minutes washing any dishes that you need to wash out or getting them ready for the dishwasher. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute here for about five minutes while we all clean up and I'll meet you right back here.
How long are you supposed to cook the... Ingredients. The ingredients. Okay, everybody should uh, be pretty cleaned up. And, some more apple juice. and you can probably smell that curry in the oven. Smelling pretty good. Can you take it out? Check your rice. See where you are with that. Um, my white rice is done. I think yeah. most people's brown rice should be done. Are you can you say that again? How are you supposed to cook the curry? The curry cooks for 15 minutes, so I have about eight minutes left on that. So while it's cooking, once we finish getting cleaned up, let's think about how we're going to garnish this because we're essentially making a nice little curry rice bowl. Um, and in a curry bowl, you have your rice and your curry all together. But as I said earlier, this is a roasted curry. It's a dry curry. It so it could benefit from a little acid and a little juice. So I'm going to use some lemon. How long, how long does it take to um, finish all the ingredients? The, the, or the, it, once it's in the oven, it should only take 15 minutes. So we should have about seven minutes left if we all went in at the same time. But the total cooking time is 15 minutes. So if you think about um, how you want to finish your dish, some fresh herbs are nice on a curry. I've got a little cilantro here. So I'm going to chop some, some cilantro up. Um, a little green onion on top might be nice, or even mint if you have some fresh mint. Any fresh herbs like that. Um, a little acid. So I've got some lemon here that I'll cut into small pieces so that we can all just squeeze a little bit of lemon over our curry bowl. Um, if you like hot sauce, if you want to make this curry a little spicy, you might want to grab some hot sauce to sprinkle on top of the curry. 
And another thing that's nice, it's a big bottle of hot sauce. Another thing that's nice is maybe a little chopped tomato. These are all just different options that might be in the fridge of things that can go onto your curry. Um, another way to kind of make it nice might be a little dollop of sour cream or yogurt. That can help make the curry a little bit creamy. And I literally mean like just a tiny little dollop. None of that is necessary. These are just different ways that you can dress this up. So if you were to make it again, these are just different ways that you can have different condiments aside, especially because everybody in the family kind of has different tastes. Some people like things to be a little creamy and tangy. Some people like things to be hot and spicy. Some people like it right in the middle. Um, so just having some of this stuff on hand is just a way to add additional flavor and, and raise up the flavor profile of the dish. This is how chefs think in uh, when we're doing restaurant cooking. The recipe is one thing, but then we think like, how am I gonna finish it? What little touches can I put on it that, that, that's gonna make it mine? It's gonna make it a signature dish. So of course you make it following the recipe the first time, but then after that you tweak it and you find ways to add a little, little of your own personal touches. Like this time I made it with a very, very spice because I have made this before. I was like, ooh, these two will go really well together. So as you continue to make this dish, you'll think of ways of tweaking it and making it yours. I think the next time I make it, I might actually add some shrimp to it because I think that would be delicious too. Or a little bit of crushed red pepper flake to make it spicy. So just keep that in mind next time you make it. Yes, so I'm gonna use some tomatoes too. Actually, I'm gonna just chop it up because these are, these are kind of small little Campari tomatoes. I'm just gonna chop it up, I need a sharper knife than that, into a nice little tomato dice that I could just kind of sprinkle in my bowl, because I know my daughter is not gonna like the tomatoes, and probably neither will my son, either of them. So I'll just type up the chop up the tomatoes for me. And tomatoes and cilantro and lemon all go really well together, so it's interesting that they all make a good garnish for this curry. All different ways that you could take the recipe and elevate it to make it your own. So I've got a little lemon, a little cilantro, which I'll just roughly chop so I could sprinkle it on. Okay, so we think about these condiments as a chef, like how can I take this dish and elevate it? The other thing we think about is how am I gonna present it? Sure, you could just throw curry in a bowl. You could just throw some rice next to it, but is that gonna be really pretty? Because this isn't a wet curry, we don't even have to use a bowl. We could put it on a plate or a shallow dish. So, I could use a bowl like this and put curry on half of it and rice on the other half. Then, use all my little condiments here to help garnish it. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll just fluff up my rice here because it's good and done. Is the rice done? Mm -hmm. And put it in half of the bowl right at the bottom. Ooh, you look yummy. Well, the, the trick with a bowl like this is it's really large, so it's easy to put too much in it, more than I can eat. <laughs> and when that curry comes out in about two minutes, I'll go ahead and add it to this section and then garnish with the rest of what I have. A little lemon, a little cilantro, a little tomato. Okay, well let's wait for a second. But yeah, that's, that's the idea. That's what I'll be doing. Now what? Well, we've got about a minute and a half until this comes out of the oven. So yeah, when you have a dish, a recipe, cook it one time, see how it is, and then the next time, think about how you can elevate it 
and always think about how you can make a pretty plate with contrasting colors. So by having this white in the background, just that one little piece of tomato that she put on there is popping off that white background. And so contrasting colors like red and green or orange and green also help make the dish pop. Okay, so I'm gonna take my curry out now. Can you skip down? And back up. If you need help getting this curry out of the oven, get an adult because it is a hot, hot pan. And you never want to go into an oven with a damp towel. Always make sure your towels and your oven mitts are dry before you go in the oven. Otherwise, you can get a steam burn. Woo. And it is hot in there and sizzling. So definitely have somewhere for your curry to go once you pull it out of the oven. You don't want those that hot pan going on the countertop. Okay. And then, as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this a pretty plate. So, I've got my rice. I wanna scoop up some of these vegetables and beans and fill in the rest of the whoops, blank space on, in my dish. Got a little color there. Get a little height, because that cauliflower is nice and three-dimensional. Make sure you sprinkle your peas and bell pepper in there. And then I can come back with a little bit of cilantro, which is gonna give us some nice green pop of color. And a little tomato. And a little bit of this. Right on top of the rice there in the center. Yeah. Okay. And then the lemon wedges, that's good. The lemon wedges go right there with the tomato in the center. That's it. Thank can you see that? So again, that's just plating in a way that elevates the dish so that you've got height, you've got color, you've got texture, and then when you mix it all up together, it'll be delicious. Or even if you don't mix it together, because everyone doesn't like to mix up their food, it'll be pretty and tasty. That's hot, sweetheart. Let me get that lemon. Leave it right there. There we go. Give me, let me squeeze the lemon juice. So when I'm ready to eat, I'll just take those pieces of lemon and squeeze their juice all over the vegetables. No, I wasn't going to do it. Wait. Mm -hmm. And again, if you want to make it spicy, you could just put a little hot sauce on there. Or if you want to make it creamy. I want to make it creamy. Drizzle just a little bit of yogurt or sour cream right over the top. I can put some hot sauce. Okay, go ahead and squeeze the lemon. She's just dying to squeeze the lemon. Go ahead and squeeze the lemon over the vegetables. And that's it. That is your curry, roasted curry, cauliflower with chickpeas and your rice. And lemon. Yep, a little lemon at the end for some acid. There you go. All right, so our time is almost up. Zoom's gonna give us the boot. I really wanna see your pretty plates, so take a picture. Email it to me. Let me see how you guys did. I love seeing your pictures with your food. And I hope you enjoy this lunch that we put together. Wipe your hands. All right. So I will send out the full recipe. And then you guys can make this. And I can eat it any way you want. Oh, you're here so welcome. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, thank Captain Planet for giving us the platform to get together. You guys enjoy your lunch, and I'll see you soon in some new classes, okay? Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Take a picture. I want to see your pretty plate. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Put it down. So.